Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to create a chat application using Vue.js, Beautify, and Firebase. So we are going to start using Firebase as our backend now. And I want to show you one of the capabilities is going to be actually the real-time implementation. That is pretty cool using the Firestore. Firestore is a, a document database that is on, on the web that fi Google handles through Firebase and this SDK of the route or no route, like the way to actually to program my access to that database, it have some events already embedded that will help us pretty much with the implementation of what we need in our application. And that implementation is going to be the real time traffic. And it's pretty cool. So we're going to construct pretty much, um, we need to have authentication in there. So we are going to use Firebase for that. We want to be able to create rooms, and from those rooms, we're supposed to be able to create uh, any chat. And then those chat is going to be dependent on who is the person who is going to be there. We're going to talk a little about security in that way. Not that much, just a little bit. And let's get started. As you can see, I have my project already created. Hello there. It's a Vue.js application with my Predator um, uh, ESLint, as you know, that I like to use, already there. Beautify is already installed. And my, I already also created a Firebase project where I have my keys in my environmental local. It's hiding, as you can see right now. But those, it was already there. But other than that, I don't have anything. So I created my project, it's already there. You already know how to do it, and I already created the application, and I already copy my keys, and it's the ones that I have in my project. So you just go forward and do that. After you have that, we need to continue doing two configuration. Before we just went to pretty much to the application, we get a zero signed method, and we enable the email and password pretty much, and we enable the Google one. Score specifying our email there, and that's done. Perfect. The other things that we need to do, and we never did it before in this in this series, is going to the database size. And what we're going to do now is to create a database. By default, let's start it in production mode. That we allow to have the some rules already applied. We just do next. We need to specify where we want to actually have our database uh, established. And I want to keep it in the central area. Well, you, you are open to choose whatever area is near to you. Remember, after you create those, um, you cannot change it. So try to provision the, the correct one that you need. Let's wait for a couple of seconds. Oh, sorry for that. Meanwhile, this is going to be creating, it's creating the security rules, and we are almost there. Excellent. This is our database, and it's already empty. So the only thing that we're going to be doing is going to the rules, because we start in production mode. We have a read and write always to false. So let's actually change this and and have it something like this. What we are saying is we can allow to read and write only if the user is authenticated. This one is the request authorization UID is not equal to null. That means if the user is authenticated, we can read and write to the database. We publish those and we are ready to go. Let me go to the data section and I will leave that open. And now we can actually continue working in our application. So let's just start working with our, and let me check my notes really quick. Doing the Firebase and the Firebase UI as we already know how to create those. So let me go to my project. I have already my console open. I will do yarn at Firebase 
and for a best UI. And we go for a couple of seconds for those. Also, I want to start using View Firebase. It's actually no View Firebase. It's View Fire, I believe. Sorry for that. View Fire. What it does is give you some bindings for View of View X with Firebase, and it's pretty neat because give us it just will be like the traditional um, document creation or binding to a specific application where we start looking or hearing different um, elements but with this we can do something as simple as this creating the first or but we can actually use the binding uh, here you go bind one specific variable with one specific document. I will talk about that later. So we will have two types of documents here. One document is going to be the message and the other one is going to be the rooms. So we need to specify those and be created. But as I mentioned before, let's work with the authentication first. We cannot save anything if we don't have authentication. So my dependencies are already installed. So I can go to plugins, create a new file, firebase.js. So let's add our firebase information. And you already know this section. When we import view, then we import the firebase um, application, the firebase authentication, everything from firebase UI. We set up the firebase config to our keys that we have saved in our env.local file. We initialized that and we set the Firebase and Firebase UI as part of the view element. We need to do something else too. We need to export our database and we need to actually initialize it in order to be able to, to use it. So, first thing, after importing the authentication part, we want to import also our Firebase database actually no database is firestore uh, firestore there you go now that we have the firestore enabled we are able to just use export database that is going to be from my firebase dot firestore and with that database element we are going to be able to communicate and tag with firebase in there so it's the only change that we're going to do in our application. The other change is going to be pretty much the same. So let's actually create my view. And this one's going to be my login dot view. And we already know how this actually is. Something like this. And we know that we need to add it to the router. So from the router, let's just copy this over and the pull login here. Actually, this one is just lowercase, and we need to import it, of course. Login. So we have the route, specify it, and something extra that we need to do here. In of course, or a store. We need to have the user information there. So you already know how I like to have it. Let me just copy over. We have the traditional state. We get the user. We set in the user and with the mutation and the action. It's a really simple store. So with those elements in place, we should be able to go to the login section login and didn't like it let's see what happened here mm. oh I always commit this error so we created our plugin right but something really important is that we didn't add it to our main JavaScript file 
we need to import that Firebase too. Perfect. This is going to be fixed importing, and I believe that going to be in Firebase UI. Firebase UI. And we need to import the CSS. And the CSS is actually this one from here. So we we'll just copy this section, paste it in our public index file at the end of the CSS. Let's save it. Now we have that login. If we try to log into the application. We choose our account in this case. I get redirector. Perfect. That means that my login is working as expected. And let me just put something extra in my router. That's going to be really, really simple because I want to use the authentication methods here. So after a router get defined, I just want to create if the page that we're going to is going to be the login or the user is already existing in our store, we can proceed. If not, we send it to the login page. That means if we are going to a, a, a page that we don't have a login, and that uh, is not the login page, and we are not logging into the application, this will always direct us to there. Of course, because of that, I need to import store from, and let's actually look for my store. There you go. With that in mind, if I hit it here in the root, I can see only my login, and I cannot go to home until I get authenticated to the application. If I do that, I can go to the login page, go to the main page. This is a really good point, just to save everything and add it login. And we committed that to changes. Now let's go to the good part. So you know how I like it to have my navbar. So let's actually create a new navbar dot view. And from here it's going to be really simple. I'm creating my application bar, color primary. It's called my chat room. Well, let's actually call it the chat. And I like to play with this element like this because it's working with the uh, the grow of the font. And whenever we click it, we're going to actually go into home directory. So it's going to be our title. Then we have a space. That means that everything rest is going to be sent to the right. In there we have a button it's called login. That's only when we are not logging into the application. And what it does is send it to login. That means when there is not a user. If there is a user, I will show my name in a template for a B menu. That means it's going to be like a some kind of drop down. I'm putting the icon drop down for the material design icons. In there, I just have my logout. And that's it. Of course, I have my getters and my actions. Because on the getters I get in the user, and uh, from uh, from the methods I just generate sign out. I'm inserting the user to nothing because I want to clear everything, and I go to the login page. It's the only thing that I've been doing, and of course using mapping the action set user, it allows me to execute this as some function instead of doing this and that. Uh, st store, I believe, dot actions, dot something. Instead of doing all that, um, I will leave it simple. This will just allow us to use like a one regular function here. So, with that in mind, 
we can go to the application view import or navbar created navbar and before my content I just put it there that will create my chat because I'm already logging in if I log out you send me here if I sign in this will allow me just to be in hello and I can see my name so that means that the login section is actually working pretty neat right so now from here what I want to do is I want to do some kind of uh, card and this card I want to have some kind of list in there so let me actually let's actually create that so let's go to our home view um, actually let me commit everything before we proceed add it napper so far we are doing things that we already know so now let's actually create a new stuff so I will open my home view um, instead of doing my my hello there I just want to have a card so I will do a simple um, a simple card sorry let me just, I just check in my notes right now so we're using a big card the card is going to have a class of uh, margin x auto that will automatically center in the middle is what I needed and I want to a margin top of 4 no not to be like two together to the the main uh, number also I will have a max width of 300 and we cannot see anything there uh -huh. and refresh oh because I refresh I need to log in again okay my card is there but I cannot see it let's put something there you go that's my car so for my card I will have a card title and this card title will have a container and from here I will have a row and from here we'll have a like um, in the title I want to have like uh, some kind of form so I actually want to have a B text field and I want to have a B button call it add so here we're supposed to write the name of the new um, form a new room and with the add button we're still able to put it there so that button looks really um, simpler let's give it a color primary just to make it a blue or not if I learn to type probably there you go and when we click this button we are going to execute the add function that add function doesn't exist yet so that means that we need to create a method called add that's going to do something right and from this text field let me delete this have it like this and I will have a label of new room so now we have that little cool transition and whenever we click the button we should be able to create a new room and put it where it's supposed to let me clear this away and now we we have this part okay let me probably if we just align our items as baseline Ah, that looks a lot perfect 
we have a better alignment than we had before. Cool. That will be in our title. Then, in our text element, or in the text section, actually, from our card, we are going to create a B list. Of course, where I get that B list it goes to just to beautify documentation, and you will see that list is going to be there. And this list will have a subheader. And this subheader will be rooms available. Yeah. And from here, as you will create a simple business item. That's going to check for a room in my rooms. Of course, verifying the room ID. And every lead will redirect me to the room, room ID. And we'll create a room with that particular name. That's pretty much what we're doing there. So let me just create my data element. I would call rooms. That's going to be an array. And right now, let's put like a ID zero. Actually, yeah, let's do ID zero. Name one. Comma, and let's do another one called ID one. Name two, for example. The what we'll do is create two elements in our menu. When we go to room, we go directly to there. And we select one, we go to the room ID. So we have a menu. Whenever we click it, it's going to do what it's supposed to. So whenever we add, let's actually do something. Um, let's actually bind this. So let's actually do a new room. That is going to be an empty string for now, and it's called a new, perfect. And let's do our text field, have a V model of new room, perfect. So whenever we add a room, we can actually do if actually we can do new this dot new room. Is different than nothing. That means that we can do something. We are going to this dot rooms down push and let's create a new element it's going to be ID and this ID is going to be my this dot rooms down length plus one. So we will create like one zero one two three going to be my name for, for now and my name is going to be this new room if it's empty let's do nothing perfect so we can see this in action so we can actually put three in here add it it's going to be there of course after we add it this new room equal to nothing so let's do three, perfect, four, and go on and go on, and it's actually working as it's supposed to. Cool. So we have this functionality that's supposed to be. Now let's actually do our binding with our database. And that's going to be a really cool part. So let's actually Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to import our database element that we exported for the plugins. So we just need to import the database that came in from, and this came from my plugins, Firebase. Second thing that we need to add we need to install the view fire. I don't have installed it. It will help us do this kind of binding that we need. 
So let's actually... Oh, the error that we have is the database is imported but not used. That's why. So let's actually do yarn add view fire. And it's viewfire without the dash in there. Perfect. Um, this will allow us, just give me a minute. Let's go to the documentation. Let's close this one. Introduction. So the view file just bind everything that we're supposed to have. So getting started, let me check. We added the view file. And then we, just, we need to import the that particular, um, how can I say it, plugin. So that actually could go to our main JavaScript. Yeah, let's put it there, just to simplify stuff. So we just need to import, let's put it at the end. We're going to import the viewfire. Actually, let's put it after here. I like to be importing external components first, and then whatever is inside my store, or my, sorry, my project, I like to import it like this. Okay, so after we have that, we just need to specify that we are going to use that. So let's put it after the production falls, and that's it. That will allow us to do something. And let's call a method called bind, and it's going to be a synchronous method. And from here we're going to do something really cool. So we can see in the binding something as simple as a programming key, this one. We can do a wait. This bind, and let's actually put our rooms element. And now let me actually just clear it out. Okay. And we, I can do you something like this, and we'll bind it to my database collections rooms as simple as this and this will allow us and let me log in and that will allow us to have a real time implementation to our database we cannot add for now because we need to change that method but let me just put this one here and let me put this one over here so our collection doesn't exist so those documents are saved in Firestore it's actually through collections so in this case it doesn't exist let me just minimize this so we'll create a new collection called rooms and from those rooms I will whenever I don't care the auto ID I just want to have the name as first room and save it. Whenever I create that, we can see actually in our application, we can see in our application <laughs> something that is not happening. Let me just refresh. Let me log in. Hmm, we have an issue. Oh, I never called this binding. So I created the, <laughs> the function, but it not, never get executed. So let's actually execute that, and we're going to be using one of the mounted methods for our database. So let's actually do, whenever we mount oh, this element, we're going to execute this bind. Perfect. 
This is going to be whenever the application gets rendered or get mounted. I'm going to execute the binding, and the binding, what it does, is assigning my local rooms variable to my collection of rooms. And from there, we could have already saving the ID and then getting the room name. We can actually see that it's actually working. If I go to this room, I have that crazy ID number that is by default the same ID that I have right here. So we are seeing that it's actually doing what it's supposed to. If I create another document and call name, call another, and save it, look at what I'm doing in the database, it got pushed directly to my app. So my application is doing live without needing to refresh it anything and getting that particular room. How cool is it? It's really, really cool. So let me do it again. Uh, let's call tier one. Actually, not like this. Sorry. It's going to be name. Third. Save it. And we have that one already there. Right? So, also, if we get one of those documents and we delete it, delete document, let's see what happened. My application gets updated. If I delete everything, delete the collection, and, and this is in my database size, just with deleting my collection by default, my ropes get empty. This allows me just to verify that I can do whatever I need to. Right? This is pretty neat. Now we need to actually save that room information from here in order to start putting pushing to our database. By that we need to change our add method. So let me get rid of this. And let's create a simple if. And we will do something similar. If this that new room is different as an empty string, do something about it. And what we're going to go is going to our database, or collections, our collection is called rooms, and we need to add a specific project. That's really important. And we're going to create a project, and this project is going to be called name. We have a element from name, and it's going to come from my this new room. So it's pretty much like the, uh, they just need to be asynchronous, right? There you go. After we create that element, we just need to specify that this new room equal to empty. This is going to create my rooms the, uh, and collections. I will add the uh, object with the, with the name property and we will be saved there. So let me log in again. And if I do want, that gets saved here. If I refresh my database, we have a room called one. And this came from the app. automatically create that new room over here. So we are now able to save it rooms through our database with a couple of lines of code. Something that you probably can notice, and let me continue adding new rooms in there, that sometimes it doesn't come up in the particular order because it's just getting the information the way that it is. And it sent it everything at once. And because it sent everything at once, whatever it came first is actually when it's rendered. So sometimes it doesn't get that particular order. So something that I like to do, and let me get rid of my whole collection because I don't need it right now. I will create, whenever I create a new one, I will call a created add element, like added a new element and it will put new date. So I just will save it whenever this room was created. And for my rooms collection, I just will put order by. 
created at. As simple as this, I can have an order element from my database collection. So if I create first, it is going to be always the first element. And it gets created, I, we can see the data there. So let's put it two and tres, for example. It's always going to be in the correct order. And the links is going to still continue working. So let me stop the video right here. Um, let me just comment everything and add it. Actually, before we add it, let me unstage it. Um, I want to do something extra. And it's going to be here. I want. Um, let me look for view. Text field. Enter. On enter. Actually, I believe I can do that when this actually a change I want to do something about it and when this change uh, and because change came from Beautify so it's a particular um, event that Beautify have I can call the add yeah you get over there so hello enter perfect I can add now in a simple enter element I can add new rooms in there. So now I can stage it everything and finish it. Room logic. In the next video, we're going to create, we're going to the room, I'm going to have like the chat embedded to the right and the room list on the left. So let's see how it goes. I hope that you like it. Happy coding, everybody.